Well, today we're taking an in-depth look at bovine respiratory disease and some of the effective ways that producers can use to help manage it. Let's head back to Oklahoma for more from the team at PNR Livestock. We've been in business uh, 25 years. Uh, we've been in Oklahoma 15 years. Uh, we're originally from Mississippi, and uh, we moved out here in 2006. And basically what we do is we buy uh, light sale barn calves out of eastern Oklahoma. Uh, we bring those cattle in, and then we start them and graze them and, and turn them into feeders. And then we'll either sell the feeders or feed them ourselves once they reach that feeder weight. So certain times of year, they're buying cattle here that are, are really pretty lightweight, might be 250 to 350 pounds, just come off the cow, and uh, hopefully, probably, have some colostral immunity. So they're running a little bit on the favor of the favors from mother. And so those cattle would look like it to be a really high risk, but they don't tend to break quite with respiratory disease as early. They're purchasing cattle here that have not received a lot of care. They may be thin. They haven't received any vaccination prior to coming to this place. So they are wide open. They're a little older, so some of the colostral immunity has declined. That incidentally happens at about six months of age, five to six months of age. Those maternal antibodies that we want to get in calves when they're young, there's a half-life. You lose about half of what's in the calf every month. And we see that get to a, a critical level in about six months of age. So when you're buying calves of that age and they've had no other uh, preventative help is in the film of vaccines, then we start having an opportunity for respiratory disease to get a big foothold. And then you're moving them and putting them through, you know, hauling them through a sale barn, lots of stressors. And then we have the intersection of a lot of problems. And, and that's when we get these explosive respiratory events. When I'm looking for BRD and a calf in a herd, um, most of the time we're either driving them up to the bunk or they're at the bunk and they're either last in line or not eating. So when I get up to the bunk, I ask myself, is that calf looking at me or is he sick, doesn't feel good? And 99% of the time, you can tell that that calf doesn't feel good. It's just something that you learn. You, you develop, when you see those cattle and you see them every day, you know their habits. If they're first to the bunk, last to the bunk, and any change in that habit that they have, you understand that's the onset and that's the beginning. And the talented people can see that. And uh, the, the secret to respiratory disease is getting the antibiotic in there before you have a lot of lung damage. And that's the trick to it. Depending on the time of year, but we, we have the same protocol. When we diagnose that animal as, as the onset of BRD, we will treat with antibiotic. And we mark that calf. We've got our own little marking system. So we know what we gave him. If he's a retreat, we pin him, we give him a different antibiotic, a different class, mark him again and get him out of that group. It's my opinion that respiratory disease is more of a personality or disposition of that animal. He doesn't want to compete at that bunk. Uh, he's almost like an introvert. And so he doesn't want to compete. He wants to stay back. And then the respiratory disease takes over because he's stressed. If you get him out and get him with his contemporaries, they seem to go on. And so we don't continue to use antibiotics. Uh, if we can get them to a different environment with their contemporaries, those cattle seem to respond and go on and, and uh, do very well. Talking about the Elanco portfolio, we've got a, a number of tools in our toolbox. Uh, when we look at the anti-infectives, antibiotics, uh, there are a number of products. Uh, the product that most people, it's been around for a number of years, Mycotil, uh, Batril, um, and some of the newer um, uh, entries into this portfolio is Encrexa, Tulathromycin, Loncor. Um, We've, we've got an opportunity to look at different classes of antibiotics that we can use in a respiratory disease situation. Um, again, we want to be smart when we're using them. Um, I would recommend 
that, again, keeping track of what cattle get treated. That has to do with withdrawal and some food safety issues. But some of it is, um, it is to make sure that we have a, we stick to a protocol. So if we start with a, a antibiotic that's in the macrolide family of antibiotics, and we do have a retreat two weeks later, or you know, just down the line, we wanna make sure we've kept track of who got what so that we don't use the same class of antibiotic again. When we need to treat with BRD, we treat with Micotil. Uh, it's been around a long time and we understand that. It, it works really well on these light calves and uh, it gives us flexibility to treat and have response. So when we use Micotil, uh, one of the things that we like about it, um, we get response within six hours. I mean, as far as a visual response from that calf. Uh, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't respond, it's not the antibiotic's fault. It's his genetic makeup and not able to handle the challenge that he was presented with the BRD. And so we understand that, but that's a, that's a small case. Like I said, we, we will understand that if in six hours that calf is back going. Some of the questions they get about BRD are, what's your new product, what's new, what's new? But certainly I see a lot of producers looking for a silver bullet in a bottle. And they really, I don't know that, I, I guess I would say they don't exist. Again, I'm back to the idea of we've got a lot of tools in the toolbox. They, they do work well, but we can, we can overcome the best vaccine program um, with poor management. So my best advice to stalker producers is to look towards the cattle with a minimalist eye. What do we know we need? Uh, we, we worry about viruses, IBR, BVD. You certainly can get a modified live vaccine with a three-way product like that. Certainly we I think in these high-risk calves, especially if you're using metaphylaxis, uh, a Mannheimia hemolytica product is, is warranted and can pay off. Again, we don't, we, we don't want to use products we don't need. Um, the more antigens we throw at a calf, the, the more expensive it is biologically to that animal. And so I want their immune system to focus on what's important. Again, it's just, it's just a tactic to help these calves have the best experience and get going like they should.